Good morning, everyone, and a welcome, welcome to Natik Yarns in Elk Grove, California, and NatikYarns.com coming to you live on Fabulous Friday, which means we only have two more days this week, and then we have our weekend. Yay. Okay, my computer just refreshed itself. Well, that's weird. Uh-huh. All right, Facebook is strange. We, At least I it refreshed itself and didn't shut down randomly, yeah. so... That would be even weirder. And, you know, nothing like, do they still even have the blue screen of death? Yes, like, is that a, they do. Is it still blue? Yes, <laughs> it is. With white letters. Ask me how I know. <laughs> it's been a while, but yes, I've seen yeah. it in the oh. last while. It's funny, that makes me think of, like, I just went through, you know how when you replace a computer, you don't want to just throw it away because there's information on the hard drives. And mm -hmm. even though it's backed up, you don't want to just chuck it. So I was very proud of myself this week. I went through all those old computers and destroyed all the hard drives, like took them out. They're in a saltwater bath so that they'll corrode. And then they can go to e-waste along with the rest of the computer. You should have gone to the ocean and done that. Then you'd have real salt water. Well, yeah, but it takes a while. Like, they're still well, in a saltwater no, bath. Like, they need to be in there for, like, a month. You just bring the seawater back. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I would like to bring the whole ocean back with me. No, that's too much water. It's one of those things. If I could live at the ocean, I would, but it's more expensive on the coast because everybody wants to live on the coast. Yeah. Except for weird people who would rather live in the mountains. That was totally targeted at Susan. <laughs> I raised my hand. Uh, you guys couldn't see it. But uh, I lucked out opening up one of them. It was a solid state drive. So I'm like, ooh, we'll just wipe the hard drive and turn this into a external hard drive. So bonus, I got a reward for doing Yay. something I've been procrastinating <laughs> for mm, the first computer's probably 10 years old, which means, I've okay. mo which means I've moved it once. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> like I moved a dead computer. Because well, I procrastinated <laughs> killing it the rest of the way. Like that, just, That's okay. It's done now. Those are the things that when you unpack, you're like, oh, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? It's so, faster to move it than to sort it. So it's very exciting when you finally do the thing that you're procrastinating and get a reward out of it. Mm -hmm. But then it's also like, I mean, I could have had an external hard drive all this time. <laughs> For basically free because I already had it. Yeah. Ugh. The things we do to ourselves. All right. Let's talk about our fabulous, wonderful, awesome grand prize. We have one cone of the gorgeous watercolor sock in color 102, which is a beautiful kind of pastel rainbow of gradient colors. Then, oh, and that is 458 yards per cone. Then we have one skein of Alexandra's Black Butte, which is 65% superwash merino, 15% yak, and 20% silk. And that one is 438 yards. So you have almost 900 yards between the two skeins of yarn. I'm a little jealous of you right now, Jackie, because we did not get that cold. No, we did not. And we're supposed to get to summer temperatures again today. All right, so we have the two amazing skeins of yarn. Then we have three patterns that you can choose from to knit with them. We have our Evening Glow Poncho with that fun Fibonacci stripe sequence. It is just stockinette stitch, so knit a row, purl a row, and all you're doing is changing the number of rows per stripe. There are also two options for the neckline on the wrap. You can either do an I-cord edging or you can do this cute little short row triangle. Makes it like it has a little mini shawl on it. Well, I believe it's 55 where she is. Oh, all you cool people. I'm so jealous. Yes. And then we have Vino Verde, which is one of our convertible wrap patterns. This one is... Wider stripes for about a third, then narrower stripes for about a third, and then the wider stripes again for the last third. Two colors originally done in Merino Cloud and Mohair Ombre, but you could definitely basically substitute the watercolor sock 
for the mohair ombre, and it would be gorgeousness. Then we have our Montagna Arc on Ciel pattern, which is a really fun, another one of our convertible wrap patterns. It's all stockinette stitch in the middle, but at the end you have a seed stitch border and this beautiful slip stitch pattern. All talking about the beautiful weather. Deborah, what temperature okay. is it there? <laughs> I'm just going to be like, no, no talking about your beautiful yes. weather. Talk about weather. Don't make us jealous. Not fair. It's okay. We get to play with yarn all day. That is true. I mean, hopefully they also get to play with yarn. And, and we have air conditioning, so not Thank everybody has that. Thank goodness for air conditioning. I don't know how people live anywhere warm without air conditioning. Then some fun add-ons to go with your grand prize. We have one of our Natik light-up pins. The logo section in the middle lights up. There is a stylus under this cap on the end that you can use for your touch screen. That's also what you click to turn the light on. And then it is a twist body for the pen so that you can get your pen out. And the nice thing with that is that when you throw this in your bag, you don't have to worry about the pen getting clicked and writing all over your other stuff. Beverly was still jealous of rain. <laughs> And then last but certainly not least, one of our fabulous class supply tins with all the essentials. There is a retractable tape measure. There is a pair of the folding scissors. A set of the locking stitch markers. And then a set each of the small and large of our iridescent rainbow ring markers. And then, of course, a handy dandy tin to keep it all in and a tapestry needle. Because we all know, I don't know where they go. If I could buy a hundred of them at once, I probably would because I don't know where they are. We go through them. It's like markers. The chair eats them. The couch eats them. I'm pretty sure my cats play with them. That's the other problem. Your child starts crafting and takes them. Oh, well, yeah, there's that. There, there is <laughs> a downside work. to yeah. getting the next generation to enjoy your hobby also while they still live in your house. It's okay. I know where to go to get them back. It's fair. Or borrow them because I wouldn't take them back, but I'd sure borrow them. So maybe they need their own supply tin. Oh, good point. It's a good stocking stuffer. If you still give them stockings. Are they too old for stockings? No one's too old You're for stockings. They're never too old for stockings. They still do that. So how you get entered into this wonderful grand prize drawing is every time you make a purchase at the boutique, whether it's in person, online at natiqueyarns.com, or over the phone with us, then you are going to get one entry. It is cumulative, so you have all October long to get entries. And then on Wednesday, November 1st, we'll draw to see who our lucky winner is. Still weird to say November. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. All right. Then we will move on to our super fun daily prize. Super fun because I just coughed this up out of my stash. That's what happens when you start cleaning. Mm -hmm. I get into, I think I get into a cleaning mode like once every three months. I just purge. Nice. So we have this beautiful skein. This is a DK weight yarn. It is 100% camel and it is an undyed colorway. So from now on, I will be describing this color as camel. This, this is apparently what color camels actually are. Okay, now I want to know how they process camel fiber. I don't know because I, okay, I've seen a camel like once at the fair. And I don't remember him being this dark of a color, for one. I'm sure they come but, in colors, but do they brush them? Do they? They're I don't know. That they're long. that's what I'm thinking. I'm like the staple length of the fiber. Like it kind of makes me want to pick apart the yarn right? to see how long it actually is. But I don't remember their hair being very long. And I thought it was wiry, but this doesn't feel wiry. 
All right, YouTube videos coming up. So is this like their undercoat? Like what? How do how do we get camel yarn? I mean, I know how we get camel yarn. We just <laughs> we, we go claim get this <laughs> skein right here. Uh, but that skein is going to be enough to make the small or the medium size on our silver point towel, which is this is probably one of my favorites of Danielle's patterns. It's stockinette and garter stitch for like six rows. Then you have these garter stitch rows that are in between a row where you slip the stitches and then do a cable on the opposite side so it overlaps it over top of the garter stitch ridge and makes it look like it's woven. It kind of reminds me of one of those wedding ring quilts. A little bit. Which I'll never knit a wedding ring. I'll never sew a wedding ring quilt, so knitting something that looks like it, that works. Because I love the look of quilts, but I'm not sewing. It's not happening. <laughs> I don't have the patience to learn to sew straight lines, I've discovered. You could do the machine quilting since you don't do straight lines. You could just zigzag Z everywhere. You like the drunken one? Yeah. But you still have to sew all the pieces together no, semi no, no. straight. You have a friend do that part. You just do the quilting. In your spare time. I did in high school in home ec do a quilt mm -hmm. um, because it was fabric that was printed like a quilt. So in theory, all I had to do was follow the straight lines. <laughs> no. <clears throat> Nothing straight. No, I think I might have had one straight line in the whole thing. Oh, Kathy says it's the fine undercoat that is harvested by combing. Very well, good. Thank, thank you. Thank you for Googling because I couldn't do that right now. Yeah. I'll yeah. have to watch videos of that yeah. later because you know I love to see how stuff is done. Like, okay, I want to watch them brush camels. Okay. I kind of want to go brush a camel when for that we get matter. When off, off work, we can go look at that. Like, when's the fair in town again? I want to go brush a camel. Okay. <laughs> the volunteer at the zoo. Like, I know they have the, you know, the camel rides. I'll just bring a hairbrush with me and while the, I'm riding the camel, I'll be like, Nice camel. <laughs> I love you, camel. Can I keep your hair? I'll probably get kicked out of the fair. Okay, back to the daily prize. So, how you get entered into said daily prize. Thank you, Kathy, for telling me I'm not the only one who can't sew. <laughs> how to enter the daily prize? You interact with the video. So, any of these lovely little reactions down here will get you one entry per reaction every comment will get you five entries per comment and every share oh it popped up let's see if we get two nope there close enough one's better than nothing so everywhere you share, you just come back to the video and say shared to and where. And you'll get 11 entries per share. Yes, muskox is lovely. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I love all the soft furry animals, whether they're big and want to chase me off their lawn or little fluffy bunnies who just want me to pet them. All right, where'd it go? There, there it went. Okay, so once you get all your entries into the video, then we go over to our handy dandy comment picker. I love getting rid of all the ads. Mm -hmm. And we find out who our lucky winner is based on yesterday's video interactions. Char Peters, congratulations. Uh, is Char local? I don't know. It's Charlotte. Charlotte. And Molly. How many names do you have, Charlotte? <laughs> Three that I know of. <laughs> Okay, you are local, and so we know you can come visit us in person. So when you do, let us know you have a prize, and we will get it from the cabinet. If you can't make it in person, let us know next time you make an order, and we will include it in your pretty pink package. And Wendy, I'm going to come back to these scrunchies. I know you said you didn't cute? have too much hair, but they're awesome for bracelets, so you could still wear them because they would totally go on like a bracelet. Oops. Well, now you have to buy that set, right? That's how it works. If you throw it, if you throw it out of the display, you yep. have to buy it. Quick peek at all the options we have. Just search scrunchies and 
They will come up. We saw that one. All right. Does all of our Halloween stuff have Halloween in the title? No, I'm going to have to fix that. Yeah, I'm like, I was just thinking that we should either do that or put it in that short description box so that they can search Halloween and it all magically appears. Because we do have all sorts of fun Halloween things that yep. just came and we haven't talked about it yet. We'll fix the search options. But just in case you're tempted by Halloween things, you may need to go start snooping the website. Okay, I believe they are on a rubber band. Oh, yeah, but you may have maybe a, a smaller rubber band on your hair and then that over it. That would work. That's what I do a lot of times because if I just do, like, I love the satin ones. Like, I love that each one comes with a satin one. I'm going rogue on myself, so sorry, no link. <laughs> um, but these tend to slip out of my hair really easy, so I put a hair tie like I have in right now and do one of those and then do the scrunchie over it. So it stays. And it's still cute. As you can tell, I have misplaced my scrunchies because I only have a hair tie in my hair. <laughs> uh, I'll buy some more. I really like the satin ones, so I think I need to get one of each pack just so I can get all four colors of the satin. And then I'll just maybe have to gift some extras because I probably don't need that many Halloween scrunchies. I mean... Maybe I need that many Halloween scrunchies, though. You know, you know, you never know. I misplaced my link, so one moment. I misplaced my link for you guys. Go look at our colored needles that are on pre-order still. I do not know when they're coming, but hopefully it is soon. They are likey, and they'll fit the Mindful and Lantern Moon cables. They are all... Interchangeable to play with each other. All right, I think I got it. Okay. All right. Who doesn't love having cute purses? I think we all like that. I like cute purses. I think you all like cute purses. I should have taken the crinkly cover off of one of the straps on these so that I can show you all the straps, what the straps are like beforehand. So bear with me. I will have to make one of them crinkle on video. But we got in two different styles from, this is really one of my favorite handbag companies. They have all sorts of styles. We just brought in two. One of the things I love about them is that they donate 5% of their annual net profits to help animals in need through the, their charity partner, home, Heart and Home Animal Rescue Foundation. So they help fur babies. And all the materials, this is all vegan, it's not real leather, so it, no animals were involved in the making of the product either. But they're super cute, all these different layers to create the design. So this one, of course, had to start with a sheep, like the little fence in the background. And then you've got an po outside pocket right here. You've got these cute little keychain charms on the side. Then there's basically two different length straps. So let me am I on the correct side because one side is attached with a like a security don't steal me thing. But, you know they probably sell these to places that have shoplifting problems. Like Target. I don't think they have these, but they would have problems. So you have a short strap for like a wristlet style and you can adjust the length of the strap with this little buckle right here so you can go shorter or longer depending on like how you want to carry it. And then there's also a adjustable shoulder strap so that you can carry it more like a purse. You can lengthen it and do it crossbody. Uh, but then on the inside, we have one big main pocket, and then we have little pockets for like your ID, a couple cards, you know, your Natique card. Really, you just need 
an ID, one payment card, and your Natique Insatiable Knitters card. So three pockets is perfect. Look at the cute little polka dot lining. Very cute. So that is the sheep in that pretty rose pink. Then we have, I'm not gonna undo the straps on all of them because the straps are the same, but the other details are different. We have this kind of cornflower blue kitty cat with the that's you know sniffing the butterfly. And then that one has a little flower and a fish. So the little keychain charms are themed to the bag that you're getting. Let's see if the lining is different. I like that the charms are on the zipper too. So it's like, that's your zipper pull. So it's very easy to get a hold of. All right, so also that beautiful brown and teal polka dot lining. Let's show that in there. You could put your polka dot readers in there. This a pair of cheaters <laughs> would definitely fit in here, actually. You put your phone in the outside pocket, your keys and your glasses and, and, and a chapstick and inside pocket, and then you're good to go. Like, this is the perfect, like, go to the fair, go to a concert, grocery store, <laughs> any of those places where you don't want to bring a whole bunch of stuff. These are the perfect size for that. Thank you for the shares. Then, I don't think they had a dog one in the small ones, so we got this super cute paw print one because it's kind of a dog one because look, it has a little bone for part of its little charm. They all have a flower because that's kind of Chala's thing is the cute little flowers. So this one's like a slate gray and black. There's a little heart on the paw because we love our fur babies. Yep, I think they're all going to be the same color lining. So that one's for the doggy people. This one might be my new favorite. I wonder why. <laughs> I can't imagine why you would know that about me already. But this one has these really pretty sunflowers. I guess you could call them a different flower, but I'm going to call them sunflowers. Uh, with little rhinestones and brass brads. This makes me think of a bee. Like this is oh, right. representative of a little bee flying around the flowers. And then it, this one has a little leaf. And then this beautiful, like, dark khaki olive green for the background and then black behind the flowers so they really really pop yep same lining i think i'll start a new stack because i think they're going to fall over if i do more than three then this one just seems like a danielle one to me all right the little like Fancy bicycle with the basket full of flowers. There's a little bird sitting on the handlebars. There's some clouds. It's very French feeling. Right? Like it just has those Parisian vibes. And then this one has the teal background and then the dark brown, like espresso colored background. I love that all the hardware is brass because it's the kind of thing that doesn't, you know, end up patinaed and discolored over time. Like I had one of their bags. Sorry, the little keychain thingy is stuck in the don't rip me off tag. Oh. I might have to unhook the we can fix it later. Well, I wanted to show them what it is though. There we go. But it's like, I had one of the, their bags for years, and it didn't fall apart. Like, these are sturdy, well-made. This one has a little flower. So this one has two flowers.
I, of course, had a cat one because... Mm -hmm. Surprise. Cats. All right, then we have two different ones for the llama alpaca lovers. Because I'm going to say you could just call this one either or because they don't have different versions. So if you like llamas, call it a llama. If you like alpacas, call it an alpaca. But it's got the cute little, like, bunting banner behind it. It's got flower. It's got this beautiful little necklace. Oh, they did like the eyes aren't the same. <laughs> the ears are actually like a layer that sticks out. This one has the kind of khaki and dark brown striped background. Like there's a little cacti embroidered mm -hmm. in the background. Rita, we didn't really talk about the size. They are oh, I can body small. Size. Grab a tape measure and give you guys some ideas. And this one has a pom pom. The message. We will call you back. Okay. Yeah, you put a tape measure in here. Well, it's still on my desk. I didn't get it over there yet. <laughs> oh, that's. I thought you. No, not yet. Had me get you a replacement for one you took. No, no, no. I, I, oh, I get it now. I guess I could have taken it out of the class supplies yeah. display. So these are about just a hair over five inches. They're like five and an eighth. And then seven and a half tall. The pocket is about five and a half tall. And then the straps are adjustable for like wristlet to cross body length, depending on which of the two straps you're using on it. And I'm going to say they're like a half inch deep. Oh, almost an inch. The nice thing is this makes these that they fall in those ridiculous parameters that some of oh, the yeah. venues give you, like Golden One switched to that, that they're yeah. like, you can only have a five by seven purse or a five by seven by one purse. And I'm like, do they even make a purse that small? Right. Like, who has a bag that small? I'm like, just <laughs> make sure you wear stuff with lots of pockets, apparently. But yeah. hey, look, they make a bag that small and it has room for just enough of your essentials. All right, so we have the stripey llama. And then the golden yellow llama. It's like that frank ochre. It's got a little bit of that green tint to the yellow. You've still got the cute little cacti in the background. Also has a cute little pom-pom. Both of these, because pom-poms would not necessarily make sturdy zipper pulls, these have a... Oh. Nice. Vegan leather zipper pull with this cute little brass embellishment. That's the word I wanted. Embellishment. I knew it would come to me. My brain has reached the inability to remember things stage. I'm there, folks. Welcome to the club. I don't like this club. I want <laughs> out. Too late. It's like the mafia, isn't it? You can't get out. Nope. Dang it. All right, so those are all of the small crossbody cell phone venue baby bags. Cute little baby bags. You could definitely use it as a wallet and just take all the straps off. It'd be great, like um, Rita said, it'd be great in a bigger project bag. You could use it as your accessory pouch and put all your... Fun. stitch holders and all you could probably fit a class supply tin and a knits that fit kit tin in there easy and then be totally like together goals being together are goals <laughs> all right if you need a project bag a purse an overnight bag a just because it's cute bag we did also bring in one of their bigger style bags this is i believe called the work tote I did link all of the Chala bags in one link so you guys can easily find them. But this one is big enough to hold projects. A la probably your laptop would fit in here. This one's yeah, pretty I big. So. It does have a nice long adjustable shoulder strap. Same material as the little ones, so I'm not going to unwrap it. Keep it pristine for you guys. The one I unwrapped, I will put back in its wrapping later, too. So yours will also be pristine, whoever gets the last cheap bag. But here's one of the things that took me forever to discover on my bigger bag of theirs. On the big bags, the decoration is also a, like, secret pocket. That's awesome. I did right? not know that. 
So the flower on this one is a pocket. Let's see, there's a little bee. Where'd they find a super cute brass bee? Like, that's awesome. And then this one for the key, this one actually has a detachable keychain with the brass ring, a leaf, and a flower. Then you've got like little daisy flowers. This is one big pocket with the oh, nice. magnetic closure. And, you know, definitely big enough for most tablets. There's probably a tablet out there that's bigger than that pocket, so we'll just stick with most. You have the shoulder handles that are the soft woven fabric. The whole big pocket, I guess I should have left this out, but the whole big pocket zips closed. There is two pockets on this side, a big one and a smaller one, like to put your glasses there and your cell phone there. And then I think, is there a, yep, a there's a zipper one on this side. Ooh, nice and deep too. And then the whole thing, I'm going to say, let's see, this opens up. Like, I just had a tape measure. <laughs> Here you go. To about three inches deep, 12 inches wow. tall. I mean, it's okay, thank you. 14 inches tall. Ooh, that makes a big difference. And about 13 inches wide. From your side seam to side seam? From kind of the sense it's got like a side yeah. piece from like middle to middle, like how you would measure if your pants are going to fit. Yeah. Nice heavy duty hardware for where the crossbody strap goes. And then another wow. big pocket on the back. So you've got pockets everywhere, which is very important to organize all your stuff. I almost said ignore all your stuff, which, you know, we or like to do that too. Put it yeah. in there, pretend it doesn't exist. Like there, my house is clean. Everything's yeah. in a bag. So lots of pockets, nice and big. And then I saved probably one of the coolest features for last something to not lose your keys. Oh, that's awesome. So you clip your keychain to this, plop, and then all you have to do is grab about three inches down on the side and pull that ribbon until your keys come out. Nice. Or whatever else you might need to not sink to the bottom of your bag. So that first one is of the sunflower design. And attach your folding scissors to that and put the tape measure in the tin. Oh, see, there you go. Then everything works. Yeah. Now we're making this happen. Look at us thinking with all of our brain cells. All right. Because we can't not. So cute. One for the cat, people. So this one has, of course, a fish. The kitty cat is, let's see. I thought he was a pocket somewhere, too. Maybe the cake. Oh, no. Oh, look. Oh, there it is. He's a super secret pocket because it's on the side. He's got a big red ball of yarn, of course, with the tail in his mouth. Of Typical. Course. Its name is now Daisy. Right. <laughs> so pretty black and white kitty and all, of course, the same fabulous pockets and that key security thing on the inside, but pockets everywhere are important. We have sunflowers and kitty cats and, oh, I have a packaging blocking the keychain. Why is it always this design that has hmm, stuff know. making it so I can't show them everything? Making a mess. It's a bicycle. With like teal and chocolate and khaki. Like it just has a whole bunch of shades in this one. I really like this one. And then a little leaf with your flower. There's its pocket. Um, oh, right here. Oh, there it is. Not where I expected. Right? Like you expect it. it to be straight down. Right. But this one's kind of diagonal. So all of the big ones, the decoration is a secret pocket. It's not oh on the little ones because that would be the ones. world's smallest <laughs> pocket. Like, okay. what would you put in there? A quarter? You could hide a, some cash in there. Stitch marker? Yes. I keep stitch markers in my wallet. You never know. I keep stitch markers everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
I used to keep an easy peasy gauge ruler in my wallet. I have not done that. I mean, my wallet's kind of a small, like, crossbody purse, so when you guys are going, wait, how do you fit that yeah, in right. there? Like, because it's not really a wallet, it's... Crossbody thing. It's bigger than one of these. So, that's why it fits. But I used to keep one in there, like, all the time. Now I realize that might have been taking it a little too far, so I took it out. Put it in the project bag. Yeah. Plus, I needed room in my purse for other things, like pens and keys and my phone and supposedly important things you know yeah so those are all of the fabulous challah bags we have the three big ones and then seven. one two three four five six seven yep seven little ones i'm telling you when i did math you knew you knew how to count <laughs> if you didn't know how to count you probably wouldn't be as good a knitter as you are Miss Short Row Queen. Yeah, I can count most of the time. I mean, short rows and lace, those are like the two things that require the most counting. Three, five, seven, that's all I need. I'm good. I mean, one, two, four, six, eight, nine, and ten, maybe also, but. No, they're in sets of three, five, or seven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. I don't know why my brain can do no. lace and short rows, but not math. I don't know why. I mean, because you don't realize you're doing math when you're doing lace and shadow. You. you think that's why. Okay, the other fun thing I thought I would show you guys, so let me switch out the link for you. Where'd it go? This requires me to be able to type, which is, you know. Like me doing math? Mm hmm Some days we can type. Right? Some days my brain functions. But I wanted to show you the other colors of the socks that we've been talking about for the grand prize because there are beautiful colors. This is color number 100 with the pretty like yellow, green, blue, lavender, kind of a goldenrod. It's hard to see in the cone, so let me see if I can show you guys the pictures on the website. They have really fancy names. This one's called Brown, Blue, Green, Yellow. <laughs> Those are the names they came with. <laughs> yeah, this not this we didn't name them. So this is what that little tiny picture on the cone is trying to show you. And these cones are done to where if you wanted to do matching socks with them, you do have it to where the color starts over at the same point. If you wanted to do something bigger like a shawl, like this one. This one, of course, has some beaded silk and sequins on the bottom because we can't help ourselves. But you can basically rewind when you get to the little halfway point where you can see a little bit of white in there. You can rewind the ball, like cut it and rewind it the other way so that you can access the color that you ended with and go back the other direction. I'm guessing it's the pink. Color. It is. I wanted mine to mirror, so I did wind it off the cone and make it yeah. mirror itself but if you didn't care if it mirrored you could just restart again take the white out and keep going yeah just cut out the white because that would be a weird little blip in your project although i've seen people leave it in on stuff and it's yeah that bad. one that one paula did she did a sock yarn shawl all right then we have let's see come here color 105 so kind of give you guys that to see the more realistic shades of the colors. And then I'll show you how that one gradiates. That one just screams knit a sweater out of me, please. Oh, that would be fun. That one says sweater. That stripey one you had up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry. I'm I know. i show them that. I know. So speaking of that, let me show you a couple projects that can be done. And some of these would be ones that could be done with like how the daily, or not the daily, the grand prizes, where you have a contrast color, like a skein of that beautiful Alexandra's Black Butte. That's what you would do with this one. I'm actually showing you people's projects first because it shows how beautiful they are in gradients. This one has this fun little bubble stitch pattern, but it's done in garter stitch instead of stockinette, which makes it stand out just a little bit more. And then this 
knit on lace border. Look how, I really wish it was zoom. Cause look how cool the, by changing colors, it creates like this little polka dot border of the two colors together. That is pop spots. See, this is so, so mm. much more exciting yeah. than an ombre. Then we have this fiery shawl. Ooh, that picture's blurry. But just a simple, easy triangular shawl. I wish this one wasn't blurry, but what this one kind of shows you is that this part's knit first and then you must pick up around you the have, edges. So and I've done this one each, if it's the one I think it is, each row starts with a yarn over, which is weird, but doable. And then you come back and you pick up those yarn overs yeah, and the then, lace. yeah, then you do the lace border. Yeah, this. You can see the striping changes from going this way to mm -hmm. this way. This Gudrun Johnston pattern. Yes. A, yeah. a slight shawl? Yeah, that's it. I've done that a one. Slight, I don't mm -hmm. know how you say that, but one cone would do it. But it's so much more exciting in ombre than just yeah. one color because you see all that movement and change in the pattern when you do it the other way. All right, one more, then I'll show you guys some more colors. This is the sweater There's we were sweater. talking about. This one is one that you would like pair it with the black butte and it's just two row stripes so stripes that you're going to carry the yarn up for each section and this is a french name that i will not try to pronounce Mon but petite it does, something <laughs> have english instructions and it is a free pattern all right let me show you guys some more beautiful colors so let me go back to where I have them, where I can show you what they look like. Color 103, that one just begs to be put with the Black Butte because these olivey greens in here, I mean, look how nicely those pair. That's pretty. And that one is, they call it orange, umber, and taupe. They're just such good gradients, like soft, soft color transitions that make them play very nicely with a variety of projects. All right, we have color 101. I'm gonna show them here. I think there's too much back and forth. There we go. Yeah. Blues and greens is what they call this one because it's like denim blues, some teal, some olive green. It's kind of the ocean with kelp. Yeah. I'm okay with kelp as long as it doesn't touch my leg. Right, Jackie? We could all do some speed knitting. No speed walking. Ew. Ew. <laughs> all right. And then last but not least, color number 106. Because I show you hard. color 102 during the video every day. Hard to see in the picture. Yeah, it is not. And that's cone, I this mean. is Here probably we go. the most subtle color variation on this one. It's like more kind of red violet plums and then more indigo blue violets. So it's really just shifting between warmer and cooler purples. And some other projects you can do. This new edge shawl. It's just a garter stitch, like shallow crescent with these like jumbo eyelets. I don't know if they're like, you know, bind off and then cast on, but they're definitely bigger than a normal eyelet. But they're a double yarn over, maybe? Yeah, with, a knit, a with a knit purl? Or a triple, because it almost looks oh, like there's three stitches coming out of it. I don't know. It makes me want to knit it just to find out what they're doing. Speed knitting. I really need to not need sleep. This mini mochi shawlette. Cute, simple, but it's perfect for showing off the colors. It's just stockinette with garter ridges every so often. And then this really pretty lace border. Needs blocking. Yeah, that one is not blocked. <laughs> That one is blocked. Yeah, pretty. 
Then we have this lace ribbon scarf. That one would be really fun, especially out of the color 102, the rain, the pastel rainbow color that your shawl is out of. Very pretty. And that one is actually called lace ribbon scarf. Just so much more exciting in ombre. We have the light and up shawl. It's just stockinette, eyelets, stockinette, eyelets. That'd tassels on the corners or not. Super fun in this yarn. And it is actually called light and up. That particular person just happened to have <laughs> three of them. But still a one skein project. Then Ooh. I, I couldn't not wow. click on this one because this is gorgeous. They used the ombre and a contrasting color. So like the Black Butte. But it's just these big short row wedges. It reminds me of the project I'm doing right now, the way the short row wedges are done, that they're like all the same size. This is Slain by Lisa Oh, Mutch. how funny. It's so different. But instead of using three colors, they just used two, a self-striping and a solid. And it's, in my opinion, even more beautiful. And I really Stunning. like the pattern. Yeah. So I like this better. Wow. I think that one's in my library. I might have to move that one up in my queue. Okay. I'm doing one of her patterns right now so we could have another. No, uh, I can't. I got something else going on. Good. So I, have I got another, part. I have another knit off to do. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> then we have Striped Tastic by Susan Ashcroft. This is one where it'd be really fun. You'd like wind off the outside repeat of the color mm. and do inside outside basically like do opposite ends of the stripes to give that really fun ombre effect or you could pair it with a solid and it would be a little bit more like this one. Oh, that's fun. Is that brioche on the bottom? I don't know if it's brioche or if it's, it's slip a rib. stitches. Slip? Hmm. Oh look at the blue one that's pretty. See if she gives us any hints. She does, does not. not. Hmm. But I could easily see it being slip stitches yeah where it's like you know two rows of knit one slip one in white and then two rows of knit one slip one in the ombre and voila okay somebody start that one so we can know how it's done right all right one more project because i couldn't oh, resist oh pretty you happen to recognize what pattern that is based on the name yes doesn't it maybe that's want funny to get another one maybe god that's so pretty you could do that with two different colors of this yarn to give that effect. But this, you guys are not going to believe Calls this. for three colors, but wow. Color affection. But you definitely wouldn't have to use three with the way this mm -mm. one's done when you do the ombre. Switch every two rows. Because it doesn't look like they did three. Where's the one that I could see closer? There we go. It looks like they did like maybe inside outside of one of their colors and then just use the other color as is so oh, no, they did, have three they, look. did they oh yeah okay i can hardly see that purple in there so you could get two and black butte and have that effect that would be awesome. yeah like these two uh-huh sorry we'll show you guys Contrast. those two with the black butte or even these two yes you keep wanting purple and orange i know but pretty or these two we have lots of choices for everybody or you could just get three of them and do like those three. Oh, there you go and those three just get one of each and play those three hmm. wow like just keep yeah pick whichever three they all work That'd be really fun. Sold. Yeah. I'm like, I would do that. Okay, I've already done one, so it's your turn. Okay. I'll add it to my <laughs> I need to start about seven things this weekend list. Yeah. I, I want to start all of the things. Everything. All right, so on to what are we wearing, because 
and now I'm running out of time. I'm wearing Invulnerable. It's one of my crochet patterns. It is a asymmetric triangular-ish shawl because it doesn't start at a point. It starts at a little flat tab. And you have this increase real close to one edge instead of out in the middle. And then my favorite part is this stitch pattern border at the end. They look like little stalks of wheat. Yeah, I gotta know how you did that. Well, you're looking at it upside down, so that's not helping. But here, let me release myself. This one's three colors. It's done to be like a little bit of a fade between each color. Like you can see the little stripey section there. It is mostly double crochets because I did not want it to take forever since it is three skeins of fingering weight yarn. But this is, let's see, like single crochet, or maybe it's double crochets. Yep, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, but you're only working in the one chain two, so it creates this little elongated Which section. Which direction is it done? So the row's going this way. So this would be right side up to you. So you're building the fabric this way? Yep. Okay. So you started at this teeny tiny, like 20 stitch tab down here, and added. Okay. So it's all those chains that are making it have that effect. Beverly? Yeah, you, totally you could. There we go. 458 yards, Beverly. Machine wash. Can't remember what the dryer symbol is, but I would. Um, yeah, I could probably go. Dry. Okay. All right. That is what I'm wearing. Then we will do what is Susan wearing? Susan was going to be mean and not put it on because I'm way too hot. That's not mean. <laughs> That's just rational. Uh, this is Starburst? Sunburst. Sunburst. I was close. Good Ooh, thing we pressing. wrote it down. This is before I realized I could knit shawls at a much looser gauge. I think this one's a little snug. But it's lots of beads. Though. It is written for beads. I like it goes from like stockinette with beads and then ribbed with beads and then kind of reverse ribbing with no beads. Yeah. Reverse stockinette. An eyelet row. Oh no, there's beads in there. That ah, more beads. Oh, yeah. I went subtle on this one. Beads, beads, and more beads. Because, you know, she's short rows, lace, and beads. Those yes. Are those are all good. Those are her weaknesses. All right, you guys, that's going to be it. We'll get ready to open the boutique here in a whole six minutes. So we'll start pulling orders, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.